year, Kolam Musco is in its second outing. Um, last year, for the first time, Kolam got a festival of arts of his own. Um, it was curated by Ashok Ferry with the theme of identities. And this year, Kolam is a little bit bigger. We've got more people coming in. Um, we've got people from Germany, uh, Britain, um, Italy, Egypt, France, uh, India, and of course some of the keenest and wonderful artists from Sri Lanka was joining in. Um, CAP, which is the Colombo Art Biennale, shares its theme of making history with Colombo School this year. And this is, we did this intentionally because this festival then becomes a bigger, um, much wider scope. Um, and this presents all of us the opportunity to see everything from film to literature to dance uh, to um, music to literature and contemporary arts in the same space of time. Um, the theme then for this year is making history. Um, I was particularly intrigued by the theme because um, for the last year or so I've been curating a project called Her Stories, uh, which is an archival project of women's histories, alternative histories. So when the organizers approached me to curate this festival, I was quite thrilled. It's a provocative theme. It lends us the opportunities to look at history from the point of view of what's past, what we're looking at, what we're living today, and what we might become in the future. It also gives us the opportunity to look at history as something that is constantly being made and remade and unmade and erased sometimes. Uh, the last edition of the Colombo Scope, I remember the opening was, uh, it was, the title was incredibly short speeches, so I came prepared. Uh, I don't know, it'd be incredibly short. After looking at the setting and everything else, I, I thought I'll just, I'll just keep this aside. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is, uh, I must congratulate uh, Radhika uh, Alliance France, Earth Institute, and British Council for this fantastic setting. Uh, we've been told that uh, it's going to be three full days. Personally, looking at this big banyan tree and the wind blowing in an open air venue, it feels a lot different. And what Radhika spoke about, the various venues, the selection, I think it speaks about the difference Columbus School will be this year and the way it will lead to the fostering of art and the exchange of ideas, etc., etc. Uh, but on a serious note, we at Standard Chartered Bank are delighted. Uh, to partner this for the second year in a row. For us, diversity and inclusion is very important and we feel uh, in the communities where we operate across the world, uh, as we partner the communities, fostering arts, exchange of ideas, uh, debate, uh, and you know, letting art, literature, expression flow well is something we appreciate and I think it leads to acceptance of diversity and inclusion. So we are, very, we are delighted. And, uh, I think I'll just end by saying that we wish Palamu Scope and what it represents the very best and when it may go from strength to strength. And also, I must thank all of you for being here. I do hope for the next three days. There are a lot of locations, even I'm, I've been in this country for five years plus. I, I didn't know there would be kind of places like Wills Pablo and all those kind of things. So I'm looking forward to some of the events and I hope you all will have a great time. Good evening. Sanity and insanity, dreams and reality, truth and illusion or delusion, freedom and incarceration, history and fiction, childbirth and death, civilization and a descent into terror and violence. These are just some of the themes explored in the literary events of this year's Columbus School. Good evening, I'm Keith Davis, Director of the British Council, and I'm delighted that we're one of the organisers of Columbus Scope 2014. It's my first, I wasn't here last year, and it promises to be a stimulating and an exciting two or three days, a really interdisciplinary cultural festival. As you've heard, it comprises uh, performances, author readings, discussions, guided walks, talks and debates touching on theatre, drama, music, film, multimedia, literature, architecture, sociology and history, well, all in three days. As you know, the theme is making history, and the arts plays a crucial role in recording, representing and analysing history. The 
curator has put together a fantastic program. And if you're ready for an intellectual challenge and an exploration of some deep and sometimes provocative issues, then you won't be disappointed. On the other hand, if you just want to be entertained and rather than provoked and challenged, then there's also a lot to enjoy from uh, 11th century salon music to jazz. Um, my colleagues will say something about the performances which are at the heart of Columbus Go. But let me say a few words about literary events. As soon as I arrived in Colombo just five months ago, I could tell that there was a very literate and intellectually curious population here, and one with a deep commitment to art and culture. Therefore, I know that the programme, such as the one put together by Radica, uh, will attract a large and enthusiastic audience. The young award-winning writers from UK, for example, Joanna Cavana and Adam Fools, uh, will be coming here, they're already in the country, and will come to introduce to you their works and to discuss them, and you're in for a real treat. Uh, Adam's work is set in uh, a variety of settings. He writes fiction and novels and verse, settings ranging from a Victorian mental asylum on the outskirts of London in the 19th century to British colonial Kenya uh, during the Mau Mau uprisings in 1950. Joanna's work is equally broad, moving between another mental asylum, this time in Vienna in 1869, to contemporary London, and then to a harsh and brutal dystopian future state in the year 2153. And that's all in just one novel. Uh, both Adam and Joanna show characters on the margins of society or in danger of falling through the cracks. Uh, but they explore these themes in very different ways and with different styles of writing. So come and hear them discuss their works with me uh, on Sunday. Over the past few years, Goethe Institute has been involved in a couple of events and programs exploring interdisciplinary approaches and unusual venues. And the format of this festival, which involves literature and debates, performing arts, film and music under the common theme of making history, mirrors this approach and takes it to a higher level. The festival provides the frame for an open discourse and tries to extend the perspectives and assumed certitudes and controversies by providing personal stories, artistic reflections, and intellectual analysis. With the sociologist and researcher Marcus Harvey, the Goethe Institute brought a very versatile resource person to contribute to some of the key issues being discussed uh, in the coming three days, and with Abbas Kaida and Don McLaughlin, we'll bring in the literary perspective and present, and they will also present their latest works. And I'm very happy to have them here. Besides literature, we have a strong focus on performance and music this year, which is also reflected in the fact that we are opening the festival with a dance piece by Winry Pereira tonight, which has been specifically developed for this occasion. On the following days, we will present the work of two companies which explore the possibilities of performance beyond the limits of a conventional stage and yeah, the possibilities of a regular theatre hall. We are very happy to have the British-German collective Gobspot in the festival, whose unconventional piece Supernight Shot will involve people from the streets on Slave Island and will make them the heroes of a fantastic story which is caught on camera and immediately afterwards presented to the audience at the old Freedom Cinema Hall. The results are unpredictable, but always surprising, and definitely delightful to watch, as performances in different cities all over the world have proven. You are more than welcome to become a witness on Saturday and Sunday night. My Adventures will present their highly acclaimed production, Pariah, in the ruin of the old Rio Hotel, and will make the spectators experiencing the story by following the different characters to various corners in the building and giving them insights into their lives. The huge interest in this theatrical experiment is mirrored by the fact that both of the performances on Sunday and Monday were the first events to be sold out. Beside our Music and History series with the Chamber Music Society and the Music Matters Collective, music will also be an essential part of our festival lounge program in the Harbour Room of Grand Oriental Hotel, 
taking place tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, 8 p.m. onwards. Please pass by and uh, have a chat with the authors and performers at the bar and listen to some of Colombo's finest musicians with a special selection of songs on each night related to the theme of making history. For me and for the entire team of the Goethe Institute, it was a great pleasure to work with our colleagues from the British Council and the Alliance Française, with our curator Raika, our festival manager Shasna, our media coordinator Manika, and Udara from Vision, who was running our social media campaign very successfully. And uh, we're happy that we were able to set up this event uh, in a good way and everything is on track. And I think everybody who um, is involved realized immediately that we are tackling some quite interesting and fruitful topics here and everybody was very dedicated to bringing ideas and to further develop them. And finally, also a big thank, uh, thank you to all of our volunteers and our logistics team who guaranteed that today and also for the coming three days everything is running smoothly. After having given the credits, the only thing left for me is wishing all of you an interesting and stimulating evening with uh, Kese Madua by Benuri Pereira. And I hope to see you again at the equally stimulating events coming up tomorrow on Saturday and on Sunday. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to, to be here this evening because last year uh, we were not present at the Columbus Club and, and I discovered it after a while it was ongoing and I was surprised and I asked one of my committee members who was present at the Columbus Club, who said the captain is here, and I said oh, next year we should be part of it. So I think I'm very happy that because we are part of it, next year we will be more part of it even, I, I hope. So uh, I, I, I'm supposed to talk to you about the, the film and fringe sessions of this uh, Columbus Club. So as I look at the total program, I'm very happy to see it's so original, so out of uh, common, if I can say so. And this is why I'm very happy about this, this idea, even the location this evening is great in that respect. So there are many interesting features and short films approaching history from various angles, and I would should say that this making history become making story somehow. So like personal families, histories, Aaron Burt with My Mother's Village, for instance, is one of the movie. It's a story about a young man's effort to connect with his parents 30 years after his parents left Sri Lanka. Other kind of uh, perspective is archiving national histories through the commentary style filmmaking, and this is a very interesting idea from Vimukti, Jay Sundera. Actually, Vimukti has got a award in Cannes, Cannes Film Festival, so he's one of the prominent director here in, in Sri Lanka, and he made this movie, made Land, Land of Silence, about war and loss, and I was particularly interested in that idea of, because it's shot in black and white, to give the appearance of archival footage. So, in a sense, we are forced to view recent events from a new perspective. It's very interesting also to, to see this kind of experiments, while uh, if you if you read the news, there are a lot of about the First World War where we are celebrating, the, 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 we are commemorating, sorry, the, the anniversary where we can see a lot of this footage on the net today in black and white from origin. I, when I see them, I try to figure out in color. So this is over around the why not? And documenting history from two uh, simultaneous perspectives from across borders and beyond ethnicity. And this is an interesting also movie about uh, the first, uh, the West Bank uh, in uh, Palestine, uh, account the protest of Bilin, the West Bank village, affected by Israeli West Bank barrier, creating the vision of history that contexts official narratives. And last but not least, documenting memory and migration through photo essay. And this is done by a young Sri Lankan migrant filmmaker uh, as she walks the path of migration, a new home and struggle for identity. Uh, in Switzerland, if I'm not mistaken. There will be also very original thing, uh, thanks to uh, an organization called the Très Curieux, and I speak, I speak a little bit in French because Très Curieux means very, uh, um, uh, okay, say very interesting by novelty. And uh, these, are cur these are curated work about, as I said, uh, it's organized by this uh, 
body is an online marketplace where you can discover and book amazing premium experiences and activities and you have a list of this kind of experience you can choose. It's quite thrilling and I'm really, very happy to be part of some of them. Uh, I would quote one intimate dinner with artists, the four course meal and plenty of wine, a cycle ride through Colombo, the streets at night. I suppose uh, Shintaka is part of this, this one. Uh, a curated walks through Fort and Petra. So, as I said, I'm very happy and thanks all of you for the big effort you did. Uh, I wish to do more from my side next year and I wish next year a very a great success to this uh, edition this year. Thanks to you, Pierre, and I hope to see you all.